Nancy is a Kenyan girl, about to face a brutal passage to womanhood. Her clitoris and labia are to be cut out. Then, she is ready for marriage. The Pocock community here have been circumcising or cutting their girls for centuries. It is believed cutting began to stop women straying whilst men were away. Now, it's just a way of life. It is early December and the cutting season has already begun. I saw the cutting. I, first I saw the, the, the place where the clitoris was, was at first, the wound from the first cut, from the first stage. And I saw the chopping of the, the wall of the, that's the, is that the labia? Yeah, that's the lips of the female genitalia. They chopped it, everything, until it was flat. Actually, it was flat and red, you couldn't see anything. Somebody sat on her chest, another woman sat on her chest, another one was holding her, her hands, and she was screaming, another one was holding her leg, uh, I mean her head like this, and like you're cutting pieces of meat. And after there I ran, I just ran, I ran, I ran. I couldn't imagine how she was. Really, really painful. I don't want to talk about it anymore. There is bleeding, severe bleeding. At times they shock, and at times they even die suddenly. The life of a woman is decided by a man. Most of the work is done by the women. By undergoing FGM and withstanding the pain, they can prove to the community that they can withstand the life here, the harsh life in this community. The people are still practicing this nini very much are the illiterate people, those who, are, who have never seen a school. They practice nomadism. The men wanted the women to be circumcised so that they can avoid these extramarital affairs when they are left at home. It is being done in the very remote areas there and these, people, these women, these girls have not maybe been empowered that there is somewhere to run to. The girls themselves see the way them, their mothers are suffering. And that is why they are saying uh, marriage is something like getting into slavery. Nancy is 17 and her family live on a remote hillside. She is the firstborn of seven children, yet her younger brother has passed her in school already. Her younger sister has already been cut, but Nancy is a rebel and is refusing. For a girl of little means, Nancy has great hopes. Yeah,
Gertrude is the other Pocot girl who is resisting being cut. Until now, she has been the ideal daughter, obedient and hardworking, the apple of her father's eye and his only girl child. She is also a bright girl with big ambitions. She would be on the cusp of secondary school if only her father believed in educating girls. <laughs> Gertrude is at her grandmother's house. She's run away from home and is seeking refuge here to avoid being cut. This Pocot girl Veronica, unlike Gertrude and Nancy, was cut, then married, and is now pregnant for the first time. She thinks she's about 15 years old. She lives too far from town to go to school. She has little understanding of what a woman who has been cut will experience when giving birth. Veronica will face many difficulties because she is circumcised. In our community, we believe that if a mother is pregnant and, uh, and she is almost to deliver, her grave is open. Women who have been cut heal in a way which leaves just a tiny hole for urinating. But when it comes to childbirth, they need an episiotomy. This means the walls of the vagina must be cut open. He'll be given home episiotomy, whereby uh, anything can be used to cut. For example, a piece of iron sheet which is left there if, if they, they were not prepared, if the, the labour is just precipitated and it happens like that, because the passage is very tight. <laughs> A common practice is to cut young girls like Veronica before they're old enough to resist. Once cut, marriage follows. Yet these girls often do not have wide enough pelvises to deliver a child. If they cannot go to hospital, they could die. In autumn, a tiny market town in central Pocot, a group of men and women are gathering to discuss how to replace cutting with an alternative rite of passage, which gives girls a chance to become women without being cut. This group is a grassroots self-help group called Kepsteno Rotwo, meaning abandon the knife. Rhoda is an educated Pocot woman and midwife who has experienced it firsthand. We still need more, more and more energy and even more advocacy to go and talk to these people because it is going on now silently. 
The real roots of cutting are lost in time. Yet it is so much the organising principle of Pocock culture that this group is struggling to find ways to tackle the stigma and superstition, which are barriers to change. Those who are not circumcised are mocked, they are not married. The men also fear that I marry an uncircumcised woman, I will be loved at in the community, people will not value me. Unless we remove the, the, the stigma, there's no way it, it will stop. For months, these men and women have been spreading the word and recruiting for their alternative rite of passage ceremony. It is just weeks away. So far we have registered 130 girls who are willing to come and join the alternative ceremony. Gertrude is still safe with her grandmother, but her mother Jane is still struggling to convince Gertrude's father to change his mind. Most of the people here, they just refuse to think. They choose not to see the consequences. Meanwhile, way out in the hills, Nancy and her mother are sharing the washing up. Some of Nancy's friends have wanted to resist, but lost their case. They have been cut already. Nancy is determined to stand her ground.
Gertrude's father has spent the last few days pondering. He's worried that his daughter could, if pressed, commit suicide. And his wife's argument that education could give his family far greater wealth than a dowry of cows has begun to sink in. But he has a problem. What to do with the down payment on the dowry that he's already received for his daughter? <laughs> Since Gertrude's mother has made a request to the self-help group to convince her husband to reconsider cutting their daughter, they have been doing everything they can to change his mind.
Gertrude has arrived home. Her mother has asked her to return to talk to her father, who has calmed down. She's not sure about his true state of mind and how much she can really rely upon a change of heart. Meanwhile, Rhoda, the educated midwife from the self-help group, has come to the parents of the other rebel, Nancy, at their home in the hills. The alternative rite of passage ceremony starts today, and she's here to ensure Nancy is allowed to attend. Nancy is now at last on her way to the alternative rite of passage. Girls from all over the hillside join Nancy on her way.
Gertrude arrives just a little later. Girls are coming from all over this, this region. We are expecting them to arrive as from now until evening. So far we are ready to receive about 130, but so far we don't know if the, all of them will attend. In fact, many more turn up. So far we have 175 girls who have arrived to do the training on alternative uh, rite of passage and uh, we are going to teach them on the effects of FGM so, and also uh, initiate them without cutting them so that uh, they can, we can prepare them to be responsible women. Over the next few days, the girls were educated about the real consequences of cutting. They were given lessons on anatomy and a graphic description of what would have happened to them. One particular photograph showing the scarring and tiny passage left after cutting shocked the girls into silence. Their horror was palpable. Domtilla is a guest speaker, brought in as a role model. She is uncut and a university student. She urges the girls to fight back, ignore the stigma and look forward to a great future. I told them when you are educated, you'll get yourself a job. You, I mean, you'll not live the kind of life our parents lived. They believed no man was going to marry any girl who has not been circumcised. I told them it's not true, and they know it's not true. Just look at me. I'm married. I have a husband. I've not been circumcised. We, have, we live happily. We're very happy. So it's very much possible. Nancy has become very popular with the other girls, and they have chosen her to be their head girl. Nancy decides they need some light relief in preparation for the coming out ceremony the next day. She's become a natural leader. The self-help group know that until Pocock men choose to value uncut women, change is impossible. The group persuade men at every opportunity they can. This group of church-going Pocot are asked to put their hands up if they would now marry an uncut woman. Nearly all of them say yes. This attitude is gradually spreading to more rural men. We do not want to follow the taboo of our grandfather and our grandma. No, we are more than When you succumb to a girl, a baby girl, no stimulation anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My principle is, I'm going to marry and circumcise this woman. Period. The big day has arrived. Nancy and Gertrude are coming out as mature, Pocock women, ready for marriage, or whatever they wish for in their future. Yet this rite of passage has no cutting. Nancy's mother and father have arrived for the celebration. Gertrude's mother has come too, but her father is nowhere to be seen. The sheer numbers of girls at this alternative rite of passage ceremony has attracted many local dignitaries, tribal chiefs, and even a top education official.
take the word onto the streets. They want the people of Autumn Town and those in the hills beyond to know cutting is a thing of the past. The town has never seen anything like it before. No, but there was a Nakawa. I don't go to your commodity, Kuji, Sukomati, Jimaja, and the Tennessee, Kuji, 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 Kuji,